the best fried chicken in Texas. Rody's Country Fried Chicken. Texas born, Texas raised. A chicken joint with 35 years of service to our community. Thanks to our loyal customers and social media followers. Come try the best gizzards in Texas, the best tenders in Texas, and the best chicken in Texas. Call us at 830-773-9189. 830-773-9189. Don't forget, we have curbside service and delivery by DoorDash. Or find us on Facebook, Rodie's Chicken. R-O-D-E-E-S Chicken. Like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook. The best fried chicken in Texas. Rodie's Country, Country Fried, fried Chicken. chicken. How is it going, everybody, friends, rockers, headbangers, thrashers, whatever you want to call yourselves, uh, fellow thrashers, right? Because I'm a thrasher too, I'm a rocker, uh, I'm a headbanger, and whatever you want to call me. So uh, we thank you, of course, for uh, accompanying us one more time on this podcast, this uh, fast-growing podcast, for sure. Thank you, guys uh, and girls. I much appreciate it if you can share and ring the bell and, you know, share and all that stuff. So thank you guys for sharing that metal interview podcast our guest for this episode is none other than the great legendary chas west a vocalist for resurrection kings uh he also has westbound he sang for foreigner back in 04 and of course with the jason bonham's band bonham of course he was the vocalist for bonham for foreigner for a bit there and right now uh, he's promoting uh, the latest album from Resurrection Kings. The album is entitled Sky Gazer. Uh, it came out in July and uh, of 2021. It's available. You guys can stream it. Sky Gazer. Badass songs. Badass rock and roll. And a uh, bunch of rock stars there, man. You got uh, Vinny Apice. You have Craig Goldie, man. So check it out. Just right there, man. The whole band is badass. And of course, Chas West on vocals. Check it out, man. Let's check out uh, Sky Gazer right here on that metal interview podcast resurrection kings sky gazer we'll be right back Deepest 
rock and roll at its best. Hard rock at its best. Hands down, man. Resurrection Kings, you guys can stream it. Skygazer is the title of the album. And uh, don't forget to also support Mr. West's other band, Westbound. And he does other different projects there locally in his hometown. And we'll let him tell you about it. So, anyways, let's check out the interview with Chas West. Here we go. How was the chess manian devils event i heard about oh, that it was good fun you know um you know a bunch of friends came out i mean i mainly do it just yeah just for fun and just to celebrate that we're able to have live music again for the first time in almost a year and a half and you know um yeah it's good you know i'll probably do it on a semi-regular basis in between touring schedules and things like that you're a busy person you're you're yeah well it keeps me out of trouble or at least tries <laughs> <laughs> so uh newest single uh world's on fire uh resurrection kings of course new album sky gazer just came out awesome stuff by the way uh talk to oh, us thank you appreciate it james yes yes for sure talk to us about this uh record you know uh the making of the record i guess the writing process well i'm being quite honest with you i wasn't involved much in this one because uh they basically did it in 2019 where i was really busy with westbound my solo record band that came out on frontiers that year so i was busy promoting that touring that to you know promote the record so i didn't have a lot to do with it the writing was mainly goldie and alessandro the producer yeah, so I sent in some ideas, um, and that was basically about for this for this record. Um, the first record, of course, you know, Goldie and I are the ones who started it off. The first single, he and I had written uh, Living Out Loud. We'd written that five years prior, so, um, at my house, so, and as well as a few other songs. So, you know, but, uh, that you know, that's what happened with this record. What's well, some awesome music, some badass rock and roll metal, you know, rock metal. It's uh, for Thank us. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. How is this record different than the previous one? Would you say it's a continuation? Well, I think it's similar, but no, I, I definitely see a little bit of a difference. I mean, and some some other uh, interviewers have pointed that out. I guess this is more leans more towards the Dio, uh, Rainbow, you know, a little bit of Deep Purple kind of sound, uh, and it, you know, there's a little bit of a Zeppelinish mod because of my influence, you know. I uh, feel the hard rock blues thing, but uh, I think there's a little, uh, not quite as much as there was on the first record. I guess it would have to sound like that because you have a uh, you got Apathy on drums, uh, you got Goldie, so there's a bit of a uh, not I don't want to say influence, but you know there's a little bit of a deal. oh obviously right yeah, yeah. I mean they played with him yeah you know with Ronnie and of course he was mentor to me so yeah of course that's gonna naturally just come out you know I don't think. Personally, I sound like Ronnie. I mean, I guess I could just little bits and here and there, but you know, I kind of sound like me with a whole bunch of singers <laughs> and put it into my style, throw it in a blender, mix it up, and you know, that's kind of who I am as a vocalist. Let's speak about you in a little bit. At what age did you know you could sing and did you know you wanted to be well, a vocalist, you know? Yeah, well, it started, um, I guess, as a real little kid. You know, I started I was playing guitar five, six, seven years old, and plus singing a little bit. And now, of course, it wasn't serious. I just enjoyed it, and I didn't know what I was doing yet. Singing-wise, I don't know. It just happened. I just, I remember even, even before my voice changed, I could sing on key, which most kids have no clue. And then all of a sudden, uh, I got into my teens, and I really wanted to be a lead solo player, a lead guitarist, but I just wasn't that good. I could play good rhythm, you know, some decent chords, and I had a good sense of melody, but it wasn't my forte. And, and when I started getting into like club bands, um, you know, the tour manager or the sound man at that point would just say, hey man, why don't, you know, why don't you just sing? Because, you know, it'll give you, you don't have to worry about equipment as much, and then he'll give you more time to go chat up to girls. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're in your teens, you know, when you're yeah. like 17, 18 years old, you're going, yeah, that sounds good. And, and that's how kind of what happened, and I just fell into it. I realized it was natural for me, being a front man and being a vocalist, and, you know, I developed it from that point on. So what was your first uh, professional band, would you say? Me, personally, uh, that I was in, well, the first professional band, obviously, I was doing it, I've been doing it semi-professionally since I was in my teens, but, you know, I just thought I'd maybe work a job on the side or whatever. 
uh, day jobs, as they call them. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the, the first time was the Jason Bonham band when I got that gig. Yeah. And wow. I beat out 700 and some singers who had all sent in demos also. And, and my whole life changed. Then all of a sudden it was like, you're on tour. You know, here's your itinerary. Like two weeks later, I was on tour. And from that point on, so that was probably the first. And of course, we were on, you know, a few months later, we're signed to Sony Music. And so I guess that, that was definitely my, my big break. Wow. How was it working with uh, Jason Bonham? That was great. We, we got along great. I mean, from the first time we met, we didn't, first night we met, we didn't even play. We just, we just hung out, you know, had some drinks and went out. And there was a jam that my friends were doing and I got up and did a song and, and uh, we were saying, he goes, ah, you sing your ass off, you know. And uh, <laughs> we got on really well. And then a few days later, I kind of had the proper audition if you want to call it that. And then, you know, and we clicked. We'd already gotten on, so it really helped, you know, on a personal level. Um, we both had a both warped sense of humor, too, which was great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, uh, or a wicked sense of humor, I should say. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, so then, right then and there, it was like, okay, the manager called me that night and said, you know, Jason, he's over the moon about your voice and, and about you and... and um, so you ready to do this? We're we're leaving in two weeks. You know, wow. it was one of those kind of deals. Yeah. Wow, just like that, huh? Wow. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, it was. Yeah, I mean, from the point I sent in the demo, you know, that I you know auditioned and I got a call. It started probably. I sent the demo in October, so I had the gig. It took you know. Then there was a holiday, so they took a break during the holidays, and I had the gig by March. Wow. No, February, March, I had the gig. Wow, what an honor. That's very cool. Out of so many It really was. I mean I went from nobody kid and local band and you know, doing some covers on the side here and there and working a you know, part time day job, you know. I went from that to like <laughs> playing with the son of John Bonham, a deceased drumming legend, you know. Wow, for sure. So he considered the greatest rock drummer of all time by most people. So, you know, uh yeah, it was it was amazing. It was surreal for the first few weeks. I remember I'd wake up in the morning and almost have to slap myself. Like, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or is this just a dream? Wow, what an, so, what an honor, man. Wow. So, yeah, right. so you've gotten to work with a, a bunch of uh, celebrities. You're a celebrity yourself, of course. Oh, uh, uh, no, I don't consider myself that, but thank you. Yeah, if, for, for sure. I mean, you work with uh, different people, different bands and celebrities, as I said, and that makes you a celebrity too, so cool. And mm -hmm. So how is it? Uh, now, I just consider myself fortunate and a semi-successful singer, songwriter, and fortunate that I've been able to have some of the breaks I got and, and, and have some of the experiences I've been able to live and still do. So, yeah. What what advice would you give a newer, a newer band or group, if you will, of kids, you know, trying to come up in the business, you know, what, what advice can you give them? Well, you know, it, it's a different world now. It really is since when I was coming up and that, you know. Uh, you know, I got at the bottom. I got that gig in the '90s, and it, you know, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it was before Napster and everything, right? Oh, so yeah. it's a different world now. I I would say mainly you got a self promotion. It's a lot of self promotion on social media sites. Um, don't rely. You don't have to rely on you know what I call the machine, the record companies. I just call them machine. You don't have to rely on them anymore. You could do your own record. You maybe get a distribution deal of it if it's advantageous. For the for you or the band, but um, you know you just got to get out there and pump and play and p pump your stuff on social media. Um, um, that's that. I don't know. That's about all I can say. And 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 you better really love it, you know, because it's harder now than I think ever. In some ways, it's easier because of the self promote social media, but you don't get the machine behind you as much, you know, which used to put money into you for promotions and things, publicity. Um, they're not really doing that. Um, especially when you're a new act, unless you're, uh, you know, kids, I mean, like teenagers and you're doing pop or, or hip hop, you know, yeah. really, um, they don't usually do that. I mean, they might, you know, if you're fortunate enough to, you know, even like band like Dirty Honey, and they're a little bit older, but, you know, uh, they're great, but they, you know, they got some people behind them that put some money into them, yeah. but it wasn't a record company. They're, they're being basically opening for Guns N' Roses and touring. 
without even having a record deal. Mm. I just did it independently, an EP. I think they just had an EP at first. I saw that. No, they yeah. had a record. It was Rev on Fleet just had an EP. And there's a bunch, of, you know, there's an example. So that's all you can do, wow. you know, and, and you better fucking love it more than anything else in the entire world. Yeah, you got to have a heart, your heart in it, set in it for well, sure. Well, yeah, your soul, you know, you got to have your heart and soul in it because there's no guarantees. And it, like I said, it's harder now than ever. So you better, this better be your passion. If not, do something else. You can do it as a hobby, but don't, don't plan on making okay. it a career unless you're willing to put, you know, everything you've got into it and, and you know, with your heart and soul, like you said. Are there any uh, rituals, any vocal exercises, if you will, that you do before a gig or maybe before recording? Nah, I do a little warm-ups. I had a really great vocal coach um, who worked with Chris Cornell and, you know, a lot of people. Um, David Cardell, Scott Wayland, and Axel. I think Axel's one of his biggest clients. And I just do some basic scales. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe some gargle with some warm salt water. Um, and believe it or not, one shot of tequila. <laughs> just one, one little shot. I don't do much. Just a little bit. It really helps. I think it clears out the phlegm and things, if, especially if you're, if it's cold weather, you know, or it's extremely humid and you get all this, you know, moisture. And so you don't, you know, you don't want to have a dry throat, but you also don't, you know, of course, you don't want them to dry out. So you got to drink. That's the other thing. Drink shit loads of water. That's that's really important. Um, Hydration. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, honestly. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. You know, and I'll just go, okay, guys, you know, I'll scream maybe off in a towel, off in a corner in a towel <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. If we're sharing a dressing room, you know, or if I'm on the bus, I'll wait till everybody gets off and then I'll do it there. I'll do a little warm up and I'll know right away. I go, ah, ah, and if it hits the note, okay, well, I'm good, you know. Yeah. So. So what's going on with uh, Westbound? Uh, you mentioned earlier. Uh, give us an update on that, please. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to start. You know, we the record came out 2019. And we had done a bunch you know, shows all over the country. It was going over really well. And, and we had quite a few more shows booked for 2020. Um, you know, and I got a new booking agent. It was looking great. And, of course, the pandemic hit. The last gig we did was at NAM show in Anaheim, California in January of 2020. So, and we were supposed to start again March, April. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. So um, now that things are slowly opening, we're going to start again in the September um, we're going to start here on the west coast doing some shows and then we're going to go to the east coast and there might be a few others and then it's going to be a, quite a bit more next year uh, but yeah I mean just you know, I promote everything on social media keep on the lookout westbound will be northern California then Los Angeles um, possibly Vegas uh, and uh, Arizona in the fall and then we'll go to the East Coast, and we'll be all New England and the East Coast. And then that'll probably be it for the year wow. until uh, maybe NAM or something next year. Well, your hands are full, huh? Full plate right there, for sure. Well, I'll try, you know. James, like I said, you know, it's almost like starting all over again, which is kind of frustrating. But at least, you know, I'm grateful I was able to at least break the ice with Westbound in 2019. The record came out, and... You know, I had, uh, you know, a good nine months or so to at least get it out there and tour a bit. And, but, you know, that was, what are we talking now, 17 months ago? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, when we, the last gig we did. So, so yeah. But, you know, people, the good thing is, is people are dying for live music again. In fact, even like the Chasmania Devils, which we were just doing covers, you know, classic rock covers. We didn't do any originals. I mean, they were over the moon. You know, they were they, they were ecstatic about yeah. to see live bands again, real talent. You know, so yeah. well, that's a good sign, and and uh, you know, um, hopefully, better things to come even next year. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, uh, we start seeing more live bands on the road and see you guys on the road, right? Absolutely, I agree, man. Also, Definitely. I read you worked with Foreigner also. Yeah, yeah, very briefly, but I always make a joke and say I was 
I was in the band for about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a bit longer than that, but Dave had a you know forty-something year career, so it was about equivalent to that. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun, and, and Jason Bonham was playing drums at the time, so that was cool. It was a great experience, and I learned a lot from Mick Jones. Wow. You know, he was very gracious and uh, very kind, and and uh, you know open. So yeah, it wow. was cool. What an experience! Wow. Absolutely, it was. Not, yeah. just, not just anybody can say that. You know, hey, I, I signed for Germany. No, it's true. Warner. I know. Yeah, I mean, that came out kind of out of left field, too, you know, through um, my old former manager, who managed Bonham also, Jason Bonham. And so, um, and it was, it, you know, it was great. While it worked, I think it would have lasted longer um, had Kelly Hansen not come along. But, you know, instead <laughs> of just close your eyes, he sounds just like Lou Grant, pretty much. Right, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know all the power to him. That's great. But uh, I don't think maybe with Jason and I, yeah, Mick was like, ah, oh, it's, you know, it's great. And he even said that this is great. This is great. But I think he was thinking, well, oh, it's kind of more Zeppelin meets Foreigner. Foreigner meets Zeppelin, I guess. So I think he was thinking, wow, oh, if I had a singer kind of like what Neil Sean did with Journey after Steve Perry left, that sounded like just like him. I yeah. might even be able to do more with it. And I think that's where his head was at. But he was always very complimentary and it was never it was never like, you know, this is not working. It's it was just well, I think I can do even more with this guy. So that was yeah. it. I get it. And okay. Jason stayed a little bit longer and then he was you know, he left also. So So what kind of music do you listen to? What's on your playlist? Um, I mean, everything. I mean, I do a lot of classic rock. It's obviously my favorite because like what I grew up on, 70s, 80s. But I also listen, I love a lot. Of, like I said, I love Dirty Honey. You know, I think they're, they've got a, you know, like, like a new Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith. Um, you know, it, was, it was a couple, there's, you know, there's, I always try to keep an open mind for new talent. I've, I've loved Rival Sons for years. Oh, yeah. They're great. Very cool. I love those guys. I went and saw them live too, and they really, really impressed me. And Dirty Honey also saw them live too before the pandemic, and they were great. Oh yeah. Um, you know, uh, Greta Von Fleet. Well, you know, I think you know they're young. They they've got some developing to do, but they're coming along. Yeah. And it gives me hope. I like it because oh, you know, guys my age are like, oh, it's not Led Zeppelin. No, it's not Led Zeppelin, and that's okay because <laughs> you know now kids all of a sudden. I wouldn't have even known who the fuck Led Zeppelin was or, yeah. or paying attention to music from the 70s and 80s because of bands like that because they're their age. They're, you know, their late teens, early 20s. And yeah. so they're like, oh, well, okay. Because before they would have just considered their parents' music, their <laughs> old fart music. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, so that in that, you know, in that regard, it's a really positive thing. And I always say that to guys my age, you know, that are saying stuff like, oh, what's, they're not lens. No, they're not. You're right. Yeah. Okay, but, you know, these kids, and, and I've noticed in music and fashion, even that, you know, kids are now wearing, you know, uh, Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, yeah. Led Zeppelin, Doors, T-shirts, you know. Yeah. Older bands, yeah. Even in, you know, so I think this, this is a, a really good thing. I'm glad there's not, there's a young, young band that is their age group that is doing this. What what I love, you know. Yeah, for sure. They're they're checking out and they're appreciating the older. Absolutely, and then it makes yeah. them check out other stuff like 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 you said, even the older bands I mentioned. And, and when, you know, I, we're not quite we're not over the hill yet, but yeah. we're, you know, we're not like yeah. young bucks anymore. So you know, uh, so we're kind of in that medium area. Uh, but yeah, they will, all of a sudden, where they probably. Ten years ago, wouldn't have even five years ago, maybe barely even you know give it a second listen. So for sure. So going back to Sky Gazer, uh, what's your favorite song on there? Um, well, my favorite was Angry Demons, actually. Yeah. I thought it was really cool, and Vinny, of course, you know, he's the hammer of the gods on that, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and I, mean, I really liked that one. I wanted that one as a single, and they decided to go for the title track, which I was cool with that. And I was like, okay, yeah, like, that's a good one, too. I was hoping it was going to be the second one. They decided to go, what is it, Worlds on Fire? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay. But... That, that, that when I when I first heard that song, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is really Dio's Black Sabbath." You 
so it, I liked it. They're all yeah. good jams. I heard the whole thing, and they're all good jams. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a group. Oh, yeah, all... well, there's some really great stuff on there. Goldie and Alessandro were stellar on the on the stuff, and you know, and shined. Yeah, talk about good musicians, man. You know, good stuff. Absolutely, sure. musicianship and the songwriting, both, James. Yeah. People should check that out. Whoever doesn't know about it should check that out. You know, uh, check out your band's Westbound. Thank you. Resurrection Westbound Kings. Volume One is the record. Uh -huh. On Frontiers Music, and then of course Resurrection Kings. Um, you know, the first one. Which you know was just Resurrection Kings one, and then this one is Skygazer, oh, you know, on Frontiers Music also. So give us your best gig and your worst gig so far. In my career, you mean? Yes, overall. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I guess the best would probably be South America when we were playing, you know, football stadiums, oh. 500,000 people. <laughs> Oh, wow. 200,000 people. Nice. And that's how Ronnie became um, a mentor of mine, Ronnie James Dio, because he he was on the you know the bill also. It was the Bonham Band, Jason Bonham Band, and then Ronnie James Dio, then Bruce Dickinson uh, Band, and then Scorpions. Um, and so he had heard me, and that's you know we you know hung out. That's how he became a mentor of mine. You know, obviously living in Los Angeles helped because um, he lived here too. In fact, I lived down down the street basically from where he used to live. In Encino now, um, so that was probably the best. Obviously, it was such a high. I mean, yeah, fifty, a hundred thousand people. We would start with immigrant song, and yeah, I'd see fifty, a hundred thousand fists going in the air, and you know that was just like such. I was just like, wow, awesome. All these years I struggled, and you know, did yeah. whatever I had to do, and then here, this is here we go. This is the big payoff. You know, wow. so that was really, and then of course him spending the time with me. You know. Um, And getting to know him and, and the other guys too. Uh, let's see. Uh, worst gig. Ah, there's been a few. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's been quite a few <laughs> over the years. Um, you know, but I mean, I always tried to make the best of things. I guess, if I can think, let me think. I remember doing Rock, Oklahoma with Jakey Lee, and it was pouring so bad that they had to take. Well, like giant squeegee brooms and sweep the water off the side of the stage Damn. and you know and I was afraid we were going to get electrocuted to be quite honest with you because I mean even Jake's pedals they had to have wrapped I have to take pictures with the wrapping towels around it to keep it you know from short now <laughs> and I one time I was holding a note and I walked out and it was just like the rain just hit it, it, it almost choked me to death <laughs> you know <laughs> No, I would say even, but you know, even then it was fun. We made the best of it. You know, it was just what it was. It was the weather. You go on, even though there was an overhang, but it was a shed. But you know, uh, it was still pouring so bad. There had been a hurricane the night before, tornado oh, the wow. night before. <laughs> so wow. yeah, that that one comes to mind. Horrible. <laughs> I can think of. There's obviously some little clubs here and there where you get out there, and there's nothing like what's supposed to be on the rider. And sound man doesn't know what he's doing, or <laughs> you know, if you're using the house sound guy, or the, you know, the PA is just not up to par. Like, you know, I've had those too. So yeah, yeah. it happens. It happens. Yeah, yeah. It happens. Yeah, you got it, man. So what's next All for right, you? Jake. What's next for yourself? Uh, what can fans expect next in the future? Um. Are you, are you referring to record-wise? Are you talking about uh, shows? Uh, in general, the whole the whole music business. Well, uh, the shows, like I said, Westbound will start. Resurrection Kings, we and we might end up doing uh, some shows. I would think it probably at this point next year, maybe. But everybody's trying to play catch up from what we lost in 2020. You know, I know. I mean, I'm I'm trying to with Westbound. I'm trying to do that. We had a slew of gigs that were booked, and so I'm trying to get some of those. You know, we're trying to save some of those or redo, have a redo on those. Um, and I know that uh, um, Vinny's doing the same thing with Last in Line, and uh, and Goldie. I think I don't know about Dio Disciples. I don't think they start again until next year. So, so that's with that. As far as Westbound, like I said, we will start again in the fall. In September, we'll start. I think the first shows are in Northern California. And then uh, we'll do some Southern California and then go south further um, for a few more days. Um, Nevada, Arizona, 
and then uh, and then I think we do Florida. We've got a few shows in Florida, and then we'll go to the East Coast, New England, and uh, you know uh, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, New York. Awesome. Um, that will be October, November. Oh, Maryland too. I think we're doing a big festival in Maryland. That's right. That's the uh, Halloween weekend. There's a three-day festival in Maryland, Baltimore area. So I think we're going to do that. Um, and that's you know I think after that probably probably nothing until now you know okay. which would be in January. I'm doing this week and I have my All Star Zeppelin tribute band, the Moby Dicks. Okay. Uh, with Brian Tishy. He used to be, he was in White Snake and yeah, Frank Ozzy and slash Phil Susan, who was Ozzy's bassist. Uh, wow. Uh, Christian Brady, who was the guitarist for Hell Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Greg Fox, who played with Hart. He's got the Renaissance Rock Orchestra. Now, we're doing a weekend in Vegas at uh, Count's Band this Friday and Saturday. So that'll be fun. Wow. Talk so, about yeah, All Star Band for sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what we, but probably the world's only um, all-star Zeppelin tribute band, you know. So, wow, so, how do you pull that off? That you know, singing Robert Plant, you know. <laughs> oh well, I've been doing that kind of for years. You know, that's one of the reasons I got the bottom gig. Yeah. You know, back in the '90s, I mean, I had it. We did original stuff, but we also had to do a bunch of Zeppelin in the repertoire, you know, in our set list. So, awesome. so yeah, it comes pretty natural. I don't, I don't, I'm not a carbon. You know, copy clone, yeah. but obviously there's aspects of enough. You know, plus I guess my image, tall and blonde, mm -hmm. doesn't hurt. So, right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, you're definitely a talent. You're a talent for sure. So awesome work you're well, doing. Thanks, man. Thanks, you're, James. I hope to meet you. Where are you located? I'm in Texas, uh, a couple hours from San Antonio. Oh yeah, love San Antonio. Oh yeah, a lot of fun on the river walk there in the past. Yeah, real nice. Uh, yeah, scenic. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, and I love Austin too. Oh you know, yeah, that's probably my two two favorite places in Texas, definitely. For sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep uh, it I think we'll probably get there next year. I don't think it's going to happen this year. You never know. And you know, anything's possible. I, you know, never say never. But yeah, but I would think next year probably we'll we'll make our way to Southwest. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Chaz. Uh, we'll see you on the road, I guess. And uh, I had a pleasure and uh, a great time All right, James. chatting with you. Awesome. All right, you too, man. This was great. Good fun. Great interview. All right, have a lovely day. Do not forget to subscribe, ring the bell, share, like. You guys know the trill, and uh, you guys can find us now on TikTok under J Rock's Metal Zone, which is our radio station, radio program, J Rock's Metal Zone.com. You guys can log on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can find the best rock metal that you can find. We play new music, we play old music. Old rock, old metal, new rock, new metal, and all around kind of rock metal. So, anyways, thank you to Mr. Chas West for spending time with us and promoting uh, Sky Gazer, the album by Resurrection Kings. Badass stuff for sure. Check it out, man. Support Mr. West's projects and don't forget to check out Westbound. And don't forget to keep it metal. Metal Interview.